I've been looking forward to this one, ladies and gentlemen. It's another meta report video looking at the top 16 from Tia Beastie's Pixelborn tournament. So it was a $1,700 prize pool, around 200 participants. I played in it myself. I finished about 38th. So I was a bit short on the top 16. I had a record of five and three. You needed a record of six and two minimum to qualify. So let's look at the decks. I'm going to talk to you about how the meta is shaping up a lot. Uh, having played in this tournament, I've got a pretty good understanding of everything. But I am reacting to these deck lists for the first time which i'm really excited about i am going to be quite critical of some of the deck lists um because already the first thing i'm seeing i'm seeing only three flavor shams which is absolute blasphemy there is no way on earth i would ever not play four of this card but i digress first deck is sapphire steel and this one is by thomas mora so sapphire steel's in a really interesting spot in the meta it was looking like a top deck a couple weeks ago moyen got second place with it however it's really struggling against ruby sapphire and it's possible that the deck is needing to tech to deal with Ruby Sapphire. Uh, so this one, uh, Tamato is in there, Mr. Smeeze. The double Lucky Dime is definitely a new addition into these ones. And I think this is really aimed at helping you to deal with Sapphire Steel as just having an alternative win condition. Uh, Lucky Dime plus perhaps Tamatoa uh, could be absolutely popping off for you. Of course, Cogsworth really good against other Steel decks. But really interesting to see the evolution with the Lucky Dime probably being your win con, therefore, against the pesky ruby sapphire decks hades also finding its way back into the mixer a couple of cinderellas as well not a card we typically see when you're not playing the one cost cinderella to shift but a really interesting looking list three copies of fishbone three copies of mickey mouse as the only ramp options pretty greedy in that sense but uh clearly the deck has done well here and I think, again, the Lucky Dime finding its way into the meta. And next, we have the Rat, who's someone that finishes in these top 16s pretty often with Ruby Amethyst. Ruby Amethyst is in a really nice place in the meta where it's not got any insane matchups, but it's just got very consistent matchups. I think Ruby Amethyst is kind of the standard deck because it's not bad into anything but it also for me playing against ruby amethyst does feel very beatable with every deck i've played really be prepared friends on the other side couple copies of teeth and ambitions this is a really really good card in the matchup against aggro decks if your opponent plays something like a lilo on turn one and you're able to play a mini mouse and teeth and ambitions that mini uh before they can even quest for example you are probably winning the game so i like a couple copies of teeth and ambitions as an option we see the bounce package of course uh, two copies of Maleficent in at the top end. Couple copies of Yzma, which is something we don't always see. Those two copies of Pinocchio as well, which are aimed at dealing with things like Ursula, for example. Uh, that can be a really important card to have access to against Emerald. Couple Spellbooks. This is another card that we're seeing kind of aimed at the Mirror matchup in particular. If you can get a Spellbook down early on in the Mirror matchup, that is going to help you cross the line pretty, pretty easily. Two Minis. Of course, not very good if your opponent has Maui's Fishhook, but if they don't have the Maui's Fishhook, the mini can be a really good option less copies of merlin crab than we're used to as well as only one queen's castle so the locations because they're very heavily teched against with cards like rise of the titans but moreover cards like maui uh some are players deciding not to go for them if you imagine if you're playing steel and you're playing against ruby amethyst you've got a rise of the titans in hand you kind of need to hold on to that card so even the fact that queen's castle doesn't need to be in the deck it's still causing problems and decisions for those steel players for example so it's quite interesting to see people cutting the locations certainly something i can see the logic of so this deck rather than playing lots of copies of four things has lots of copies of two and with this deck being a more control heavy deck i think having options is a really good thing and i actually do quite like the way this one's built okay up next we have simon Asil, who is also on ruby amethyst this one with three copies of mini uh, we've got the full bounce package to jim hawkins so we're expecting to see four locations and indeed we do we see the be prepared and the friends four copies of lady tremaine in this one which is interesting lady tremaine a card i'm a big fan on and quite excited to see her coming back into the mixer as well but yeah just you can see like the core of the deck pretty similar but you kind of can be more flexible with your options and now we're in set three there's so many good cards in the game it is more difficult to build a refined list and i think therefore that we are seeing those rather than those like 52 cards which are all the same we've maybe got like 40 cards or so which are pretty similar in these and then like 20 flexible slots or so and next we have another sapphire steel deck with one copy of let it go here uh, we've still got the cogs we have four flower shams which is what i want to see uh, two copies of rise of the titans 
two lucky dimes as well so it seems like lucky dime is definitely the way to go if you're looking at dealing with ruby and sapphire pretty interesting to see that this deck's still able to deal with it if you can go gaston plus tap your dime that's three law before your opponent can clear it with be prepared so lucky dime meta is upon us our next we have a emerald amethyst deck now this is exciting for me to see because i was also playing emerald amethyst this week uh this weekend i think it's a very very good deck there's a few different ways you can go about building it this one is more of the classic tempo deck with the mother knows best in the mixer uh, no copies of genie here uh, also no copies of the one drop maleficent so looking for the curse merfolk or the churner bogs on one then a turn two of something like a flynn rider or a madam mim one copy of pinocchio is also quite interesting not a card i was playing myself uh, i went for a more uh hipster top end with jafar this one is just looking to kind of dump queen's castle also in the mix so this is a card which is really good when going first but can feel a bit dodgy going second of course the merlin uh, goats as well as the merlin rabbits for a bit of card draw ursula threatening to sing friends or mother knows best i think that this deck just has a really good place in the meta game because there's so much Saf uh, ruby sapphire at the moment this deck is really good at dealing with ruby sapphire now of course steel is a pretty big concern if you're playing a aggro deck but with cards like ursula this deck can still deal reasonably well with steel so i'm really excited to see uh, a amethyst and emerald player in the top i do think it's the best combo for aggro at the moment because you get mainly the ursula uh, two drop to deal with friends the bounce package just gives you a lot of tempo early game and you still have lots of aggressive questing threats you can play uh, maleficent one drop as well if you want to be even more aggressive in your opener which i think is something the deck probably does want to do in my opinion um yeah i went down a jafar route to be a bit more hipster but you can absolutely play the deck with or without jafar and i'm really excited to explore the aggro decks moving forwards more it's a deck i started experimented with very late on friday evening evening and then i submitted my deck very early on saturday morning so i actually don't like kick cloud kicker personally um the card performed really badly for me this weekend uh, i just don't think it's great in the current meta it can be great in mirror matchups but the mirrors aren't that common kick cloud kicker just feels like a worse version of mad admin fox so yeah uh, another ruby amethyst won't look at this one too much but we see one copy of prince eric uh, as well as a couple copies of teeth and ambitions two marys fisher only one spell book a yizma in there as well pretty similar looking list uh, this one was by uh, mccoya up um, next we have constantine who is on amber steel so we're seeing a lot of variation here so many good decks amber steel no rockstar stitch Oh, that makes me very happy but we do see the queen interestingly and i actually like this idea having a shift to card which could sing could be really really good against ursa for example right imagine you play queen on one and you you're going first and you shift in your queen on two and bam before the ursa can come through you already sing a whole new world could be pretty interesting i definitely don't hate the idea of playing the queen in this one definitely something i prefer to the idea of rockstar stitch and i do think it's also quite important because we're seeing a lot of amber sorry a lot of ruby sapphire to have a deck which can win quite quickly does seem pretty good so this list looks pretty interesting to me with two copies of cp's flutes again these cards are slower than a lantern but gonna be good against those ruby sapphire control decks so lots of decks just basically adapting to a slower meta game by including cards like sleepy's flutes uh, including cards like lucky dime so maybe it's time for benja benja's looking pretty good right now i have to say uh, we have another ruby deck this one ruby sapphire i think this is the first ruby sapphire deck we're seeing three copies of be prepared only one lucky dime these are cards i would expect to see four copies of be prepared and two copies of lucky dime maui's fishhook now maui's fishhook still a very good card but we are also seeing some players play shield of virtue in these ruby sapphire decks instead the reason is is shield of virtue is giving you flavisham source um, more easily like you can just dump it down and, and remove it with flavisham for card draw but you're still able to for example challenge a location with a maui and then ready your maui for three cost with a shield of virtue and then challenge with the maui again so we are seeing a lot of players drop maui's fishhook in ruby sapphire specifically for the shield of virtue option instead with more flavisham fuel uh, judy hops is a really interesting card which is also aimed at the mirrors a little bit if you can judy hops your opponent's lucky dime for example that could be a game winning play three copies of madame medusa mini mouse not often a card that you're going to be seeing in a sapphire decks because sapphire is ramping uh, but this is like another aggro tool which could help you win the mirror for example so pretty interesting to see how these decks are developing two copies of scar a couple copies of Corella, only three queen of hearts a couple copies of grandma tala really really interesting to see this one two copies of tremaine which i like to see in these control heavy decks uh, i do like the look of this list quite a bit honestly 
have to say pretty cool i would probably be playing two copies of lucky dime uh four copies of be prepared as well is, is a must for me but uh, apart from that the list looks pretty cool i'm next another ruby sapphire deck i'm not surprised we're starting to see more ruby sapphire i think it's the deck to beat going in this weekend uh, i played an aggro deck and i lost to it twice which tells you how blooming good it is this one's got one jumper heads be prepared uh, it's also got Heart of Tafiti, two Lucky Dimes, one Magic Golden Flower. So Magic Golden Flower is very similar to Shield of Virtue. It's just a cheap item for Flavisham Fuel. I do definitely prefer Shield of Virtue over Magic Golden Flower and Mary's Fishhook in these moving forwards. Uh, I'm going to be doing kind of my own version of this deck pretty soon. Now the meta's settled a little bit more. Uh, Grandma Tala 4-drop is an interesting one. She is putting a card in your hand and giving you something on board. Not a card I absolutely adore, if I'm honest. I think with Flavisham, you tend to have enough card draw. But if you're missing Flavisham, it's a nice option. Heart of Defeaty, I find to be a little bit so in my um, my testing as well. But perhaps it's really good in the mirror. I could certainly see it. And it's inkable. It's Flavisham Fuel. And next, we have another Ruby Amethyst deck. This one with four Be Prepared, two Teeth and Ambitions, two Maleficence. Uh, lots of copies of four of cards here. Two Pinocchios, two Merlins, two Yzmas. Uh, two fish hooks, two spell books, only one queen's castle and one dragon fire. So uh, really interesting to see the different routes. I'm definitely like with the spell books and stuff like that. These are aimed at the mirrors and aimed at the slower meta because of Ruby Sapphire. So I'm definitely seeing a world where Benja starts to come into the mixer here. Uh, up next, we have a Sapphire Steel deck with three Let It Goes, which is a lot. Four bells in this one. Beast, Cinderella, Cinderella, only two Gaston, three Hades, three Tinkerbells, three Tamatoas, two Smees, and Winnie the Pooh, four Rise of the Titans, three Lucky Dimes. Oh my goodness. Now, these are decks we're really seeing, again, teched at dealing with Ruby Sapphire. If you can beat Ruby Sapphire with... Um, uh, with sapphire steel your matchups are so so clean this deck was looking great it was just struggling against ruby sapphire so this deck looks like it's one that's kind of desi designed at dealing with that winnie the pooh not a card we see that often the reason winnie the pooh we don't see that often is it's a ramp card which doesn't give you instant ramp so you play winnie the pooh on turn three but then on turn four you can only play four ink whereas if you play mickey mouse on turn three on turn four you could play your cogsworth for example now this deck is actually not playing cogsworth at all which is fascinating and that might be because again it's aimed more at winning the ruby sapphire matchup rather than winning the mirror matchup pretty interesting stuff the meta is really shifting and developing the game is insanely balanced and so much fun right now inkwell gamers top 16 list this might have been uh, the player that beat me there's one player in the top 16 which beat me i don't think it is i think i played one of their teammates because i think the player i lost to from this from this team was on Ruby Sapphire. I actually lost to two players from this team. Uh, two of my three losses were against Ink players from Inkwell Gamers, um, which I think is a new team. We've got Maui, we've got Maleficent, Medusa, two Pinocchios, three Yzmas, four Be Prepared, Fishhook, Spellbook, two Castle. Pretty similar looking list, just kind of the ratio is different. We have, oh, a Benja, but only one. And we have Emerald Steel, which is so fascinating. And this is another aggro deck. And actually, I have to say, Emerald Steel, another deck I'm... Sorry, uh, Amethyst Steel. I do think aggro is going to start making a comeback into this meta. I think aggro looks pretty damn good into the current meta game. Uh, it's definitely something I want to experiment with more. There's loads of routes you can go. This is a really spicy list by Dennis. So the turn one is Olaf or Maleficent. Uh, ideally, you're going to be playing the Maleficent, but you've got Olaf to fall back on. Then your turn two, you're looking at either bouncing your Mim, your Maleficent back with Madden Mim, or if they don't play any threats, then you've got the Pinocchio on turn two, right? Uh, for big questing potential. Then uh, you've also got Robin Hood on turn one as well, which is something I missed there. So you've got lots of one drops, 12 one drops, which I think is what aggro is looking to play. I only had eight one drops in my aggro deck uh, this weekend. And when I missed one of those one drops, it felt like I was just losing a lot. So I like the idea of playing 12 one drops in these aggro decks for a bit more consistency. So your turn two, again, Madam Mim Snake, if your opponent has a threat to bounce back your Maleficent. If they don't develop, then you go Pinocchio. This shift Pinocchio is fascinating. When you play this character, you may return chosen character um, of your opponents with three cost or less or, or to yours. This is actually a card I was also looking at myself. So you could quest of this Pinocchio. And if they have a threat on the board, you just accept that it's going to get removed and then BAM! This is like a good version of Kit Cloud Kicker, right? Like, that's a lot of tempo. You've got Arthur to bounce back your cards as well. You've got the Goats, the Rabbits, the Robin Hood, the Smee, the Benja, Hercules and Prince as bodyguard options. Pretty interesting. 
don't love the Hercules, I have to say, when you could be playing Kidder, which is a two-drop bodyguard. I think this Hercules should absolutely be Kidder because then that also gives you a different option on turn two, right? If you go Maleficent, you don't have to go Mim to bounce it back. Instead, you could play a Kidder, which is like Simba stats, to protect your Maleficent rather than bouncing it back. But yeah, I think that aggro decks have a real place in this meta. I think Steel is falling off. Obviously, the concern with playing a deck which isn't playing Emerald is you don't have that Ursula to discard, grab your swords back from your opponent's hand but with pinocchio you could maybe bounce back there robin hood for example to deny the shift and song so really really interesting deck probably one i'm going to be checking out i love the look of aggro at the moment i think there's so many different ways to go and we've already seen two aggro decks making it to the top 16 which is great to see as someone that played aggro this weekend i really think aggro could win the whole tournament i really really do uh, okay we've got up next we've got a Another Ruby and Sapphire deck. This one with only two copies of Queen of Hearts. Now, this is like the kind of deck which is going to really struggle against aggro. In one of the games I lost as an aggro player against Ruby Sapphire, I actually played Ursula on turn two, which was too slow, and I kind of was learning on the job. I needed to just make a play like Flynn Rider or Maleficent Curse Merfolk on turn two for like pure aggro. I go Ursula on turn two to try and discard their one jump ahead, though, as I'm learning the matchup on the job. And I see their hand, and they have two Queen of Hearts and a Maui. What do I do at that point as an aggro player? Well, it was pretty much over. Too much of a slow start and they had all the answers. Uh, this one's also got two Lucky Dimes, two uh, Heart of Defeaties, four One Jump Aheads, four Be Prepared, Muck Duck Manor. Really, really strong looking deck. Two more to look at. And we've got Let's Go. I was hoping we might see another Amethyst Sapphire deck because I've heard pretty good things about it. And we do. We've got two Queen's Castle, two McDuck Manor. We've got the Popsicle Package with Flavisham. Four copies of Friends with Mickey Mouse. That can be a really good combo. Uh, we have the Bounce Package with the Fox, the Snake. We have the Tala and Chernabog's Followers. Maleficent's Crab's Goats. We have Rafiki, Yizma, at Cogsworth, Elsa. So not a huge top end here. Again, probably a deck which is looking to beat those Ruby Sapphire decks. The locations could be pretty good. Really, really interesting to see this build. Lots of different ways you could go about it. Of course, you could go heavier on the Elsas. You could go Fishbone Quill. This one doesn't. So not super heavy on ramp this one. It's only actually the Mickey which is ramping. Really, really exciting to see this deck performing well. Definitely. Oh, this game's just so good. There's so many good decks. It's amazing. And finally, I knew this one was coming. We have Decandio, the reigning champ who played Amber Steel Songs last time. This time is on Amber Ruby. And I have to say, I like the look of the list. This is the one I did take a little bit of a peek at. Uh, okay, so the turn one play with this deck is not pluto which honestly i like the only turn one play which is perhaps the only thing i don't love on this one is the queen the queen is the only one drop so he's gonna probably be hard mulliganing looking for the queen and if he doesn't find it it's a little bit of a slower start turn two bam lantern then you're like starting to ramp you got also mother gothel you could shift the queen on turn two your other turn two play is lefou so not super heavy on the one and two drops. Going not for Rockstar Stitch Pedita, but instead going for a more control heavy. So pretty low on the one and two drops, but that means this Mufasa is actually going to be hitting pretty damn consistently. Uh, we've got the copies of Lantern to help you get to the Maleficent. The Chernabog's in there as a one-off, which is only a card you should ever play as a one-off. There's a random Maui, which could be a nice option off Mufasa. Prince Eric, which is a pretty aggressive tool. Tinkerbell and Hades working in quite similar ways. Tinkerbell is looking at the top four cards of your deck, and then you put one of the character cards of your choice into your hand. Uh, really, really exciting deck. It's a pretty aggressive deck. There's also Pongo in here, not a card I love. Now, I I'm really excited to see this deck being more greedy, not playing that many more one and two drops to really try and juice out the Mufasa. My concern with this one is that it might end up being a bit too slow into Ruby Sapphire, but clearly the Candio has done pretty well. It was a deck which got, had a record of six and two, so it wasn't like an 8-0 Barnstormer. Personally, if I was to build this deck, I think, again, I would 
probably go for the Pedita route still. I do think that Pedita and a few more one and two drops a bit more aggressive is probably going to net you better results into the current meta. But clearly, this deck has a solid place. One be prepared, going for a more control heavy route with the Medusas, the Maleficents. My version of this was more low to the floor, right? But really excited to see the variety. Big shout outs to the Candio for bringing the spice. We see so how many different decks did we get? We get Sapphire Steel. We expect to see that. We expect to see Ruby Amethyst. That's two decks. We see more Sapphire Steel, we're still on two. We see Emerald Amethyst, that's three different color combinations. We see more Ruby Amethyst. We see Sapphire Steel Songs, that's four different decks. We see Ruby Sapphire, that's five. Sapphire Steel again, Ruby Amethyst again. We see Steel Amethyst, that's six different decks. And finally, we see flipping uh amethyst sapphire seven and then eight amber ruby eight different decks if i didn't miscount it might have been seven and i might have counted the same one twice but eight different decks or seven different color combinations in the top 16 disney locana has so much variety right now the game is insanely well balanced there's so much room for experimentation still in the current meta game. It is not a settled meta by any stretch. So my thoughts and opinions are coming into this top 16, what is the meta looking like? I think the top deck and the deck to beat right now, in my opinion, is Ruby Sapphire. I think it's got great matchups across the board. Then the second deck, which is kind of like the staple deck, because it's just got good matchups into everything, is Amethyst and Ruby, Ruby Amethyst. It's a solid deck. It's got good matchups everywhere, but it's not that polarizing. Then you've got the Steel and sapphire decks which are starting to tech themselves into the ruby sapphire matchups with these lucky dimes maybe then aggro has a chance against these decks because they're going less aoe look this deck's not playing grab your sword for example or it is but it's only uh, two copies of grab your sword so maybe that means then that aggro can find its way into the meta with something like an ursula you can discard the grab your swords if you're aggressive enough you can beat the ruby sapphire players you can be be beating the ruby amethyst players then also you've got uh emerald steel which is not a deck we've seen in the top 16 that has a really tough matchup into ruby sapphire but it's really good into all these other decks in the meta it's the ruby sapphire matchup which is em stopped me playing emerald steel so then emerald steel can come back into the mixer i think that the meta is so exciting so diverse right now i am in awe at how well balanced this game is and i'm super super excited to see how the top 16 plays out I am going to be bringing you guys lots of videos from the top 16 because I'm going to be casting it. Really, really excited to see what deck comes out on top and excited to share with you my thoughts on the meta as the weeks progress. There's also a big tournament in Georgia this weekend. So I'm going to be doing a tournament recap on that tomorrow. So yeah, so much to talk about. DC Locana is just banging in a great place right now. And I'm so excited to be making content for this game. See you guys very, very soon. And thanks for watching the whole video. Give it a like and subscribe. Bam.